The Hermeneutics of Genesis 1-2 Hermeneutics is a science of interpretation, especially of the Holy Scriptures. It is also the branch of theology that deals with the principles of biblical exegesis. Now, the debate about the meaning of the seven days of Genesis has raged across the centuries. In recent years, the argument has morphed into the great debate between what is billed as a choice between creationism and evolution and presented in the guise of biblical truth versus scientific truth, when in reality, the entire debate is a satanic distraction from the correct resolution of the question. Between the verse, in the beginning God created the heaven and earth, Genesis 1-1, and the verse where God says, let there be light, Genesis 1-3, there is the factual and very important statement of Genesis 1-2. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The fact that Genesis 1-2 unequivocally states that the earth already exists before the Lord God says, let there be light, and before he begins the divine creation process of the seven days is very instructive. The fact that the earth already exists means it must have been created previously to this point in time. That previous point in time is Genesis 1-1. In other words, the verse clearly says the earth is already there as a planet in a dark expanse of a universe strewn with waters. We can also know that the space-time continuum already exists, and the known laws of physics are already in place before God says, let there be light. Now this establishes some precepts. 1. All things listed in Genesis 1-2 were created sometime prior to the seven days of Genesis. Two, the seven days were not the initial creation of all things that exist. Three, the earth is older than the seven days of Genesis. These are facts. These are biblical facts. Although the Bible clearly documents that the creative event of the seven days of Genesis occurred about 6,000 years ago, and that's calculated by the genealogies of man from Adam and the generations afterward, the actual time of the original creation of the heaven and earth, Genesis 1-1, is only stated as in the beginning. There is no specified time chronology given in the Bible between the two listed creative events. The condition of the earth given in Genesis 1-2 only describes the surface conditions of the planet at that time. All the creative work done by the Lord God in the seven days of Genesis that follows deal only with things that pertain to the surface of the planet and upwards into the reaches of space. There is no specific mention of any kind of creative work concerning the earth's subsurface being performed during the seven days. We know, however, that the subsurface of the planet Earth has a clearly differentiated core, mantle, and crustal structure. We also know that the Earth's magnetic field is generated by the dynamo of churning metal-rich minerals in its core. These structural features, therefore, were already established and in place under the Earth at the time of Genesis 1-2, before the seven days of Genesis. The minutia of things under the Earth's surface, other than Hades, Hell, Taurus, and the bottomless pit, are not specifically dealt with in the Holy Bible. God has chosen, rather, to preserve those specifics in another book that he has written in stone. He is the author of both the Book of the Rock of Ages, our Bible, and the Book of the Ages of the Rocks, Earth's geological record. This brings us to God's second witness, the Earth's geology, and its proper place in Bible truth. Who authored the Bible and who made the Earth's geology? The Lord Jesus Christ. Geology does not have a hidden agenda. Geology deals with facts that are observable. At Genesis 1-2, the rock strata of the Earth's crust is already there, as are the fossils that are entombed where they died. They are God's witness to the truth that death was already in the creation long before he created 
the world of Adam. A 480 million year old fossil is a fact. What geology cannot tell you is the truth revealed by the observation that there was death back that far in Earth's natural history. Only the Bible can tell you why. Now do not confuse the validity of geologic facts with evolutionary theory. They're not the same. The theory of evolution is an intellectual belief system devised to explain the existence of ancient things discovered by the geologist by postulating how life came to be without the agency of a creator God. Now, since God declares in the Bible that He is real and He is responsible for the creation of all living things, feel free to dismiss and reject the theory of evolution outright as false, which it is. But do not dismiss the geological observations of an old earth and an ancient dead fossil because they are valid facts and a sure witness to the truth of the Word of God. And don't think for a minute that God's Word is incapable of addressing the questions presented by the geological facts. The Holy Spirit of Truth and the Bible can most certainly answer those questions if you're willing to hear what the Spirit has to say about the matter. The presence of darkness before the seven days of Genesis baffles those with only a traditional understanding of the creation because the Bible says this, this then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If God is light, and in him there's no darkness at all, then why was there darkness present at Genesis 1-2? But the Holy Bible also says this, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things, Isaiah 45-7. Yes, God does create darkness and create evil, but does so only in response to the presence and working of sin. This is called spiritual darkness, and it is present at Genesis 1-2 along with its literal counterpart. Established Precept 4. There are two forms of darkness, and both are present before the creative work of the seven days. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and morning were the first day. Now the correct cross-reference for interpreting the biblical meaning here defines the two forms of light and darkness involved in the verse we just read. And you'll find this in 1 Thessalonians 5.5. 5. It says, Ye are the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of the darkness. This is the biblical truth of the matter, and it is revealed only by the Holy Spirit of truth. This is the hidden wisdom that certifies and guides to the correct interpretation of the whole matter. When God said, Let there be light, there were two forms of light given, one physical, and the other spiritual. It was given to divide two forms of darkness within the creation, one physical and the other spiritual. This was the first of two divisions God made at the beginning of the seven days. The second division was made on the second day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. Genesis 1, 6 through 8. The seven days of Genesis were seven literal 24-hour days, just as the Bible states. But the creative work of the seven days was a regeneration of the heavens and earth. It was not the original creation of the heaven and earth. The rightly divided scriptures and the Holy Spirit witness to the full truth of the matter. 